All right, I got curious about alimony and child support because when I divorced my husband, I did not ask for alimony or child support or anything. We just mutually agreed on everything, including how our last remaining child at home would spend his time. So let's cover the alimony part first. I think a lot of guys are under the impression from listening to an extreme case of women who are narcissistic, drama queens, and entitled that make the news about their big payouts. Well, the truth of it is that the majority of men don't have the money to make big payouts, okay? <laughs> Most men are way too broke to be siphoned off for anything. And I think that could account for a lowering of the divorce rate because a woman's going to know, even if he pays me 20% of his income, I can't live on that. You see what I'm saying? So I think for the majority of men, this fear is overstated. And for men who make a good income, they usually get a prenup. But I would suggest that when you get married, I think there are things you can do to lower the chances of a woman who becomes vindictive at divorce because that's really the big difference. I didn't ask for anything. I know women who didn't ask for anything because they either earned more than money or they were paying or they made the equal amount of money. Uh, these are friends I'm talking about because they're not vindictive. Okay, so the women that plunder men after their divorce have this feeling of like entitlement like uh this guy owes me i'm gonna go after him and get him it's a lack of responsibility and it's like well i can't make any money he owes me so pick your women carefully okay you want to look for someone who takes accountability who is empowered who um who doesn't retaliate when she's angry, who is kind of an introspective, self-aware person. And ideally, um, it would really help if the woman keeps working part-time because if you have a woman who's out of the workforce for 20 years, it's going to be hard for her to um, uh, provide for herself. So those are things you can do. Find a woman who is of a good nature who is working part-time at least or has some education and some job skills. And that's good in any case because um, you could lose your job, you could become disabled, you could die. And it's unless you have like a multi-million dollar life insurance policy, at some point you'll have to provide for the family. So it's a good fallback. And I am a big believer that women ought to stay home with their children when they're very young. But part-time work can be started when they're a few years old or in elementary school. And that's like a good safety net. Okay, so that has to do with the alimony. Now, uh, and uh, like I said, a lot of women don't even ask for that. So, now let's talk about child support. Um... A lot of men consider themselves victims of an unjust system because they are ordered to support the children they chose to have. They view child support as extortion instead of taking care of their responsibilities to their children. Some men hate paying child support. I looked up the average amount of child support that men pay in the U.S. and the data we have really lags. It's the most recent data is from the 2010 census survey. And it shows that the average child support payment in the U.S. by fathers is $430 a month. <laughs> you know, this is nothing. And I don't know for how many kids it is, but it says that only less than 50% of fathers pay that. 30% of fathers pay nothing. And 20% pay just a little bit. So there's that. Um, there's a calculators you can look up online if you're curious to help you figure out how much child support you might pay. Um, as far as alimony in California, you take like 40% of the higher earner's income and subtract 
30% of the lower earner's income, and that's the difference. So I figured like a man making 100000 a year and his wife 50000 a year, he would pay her 2000 a month in alimony, and it would go for like a half or a third of the number of years they were married. Um, but again, many people don't have lawyers, and they just work things up for themselves. So... How do men feel about paying their wives? Now, this is very interesting because I get a lot of comments on my channel about how I would anyone get married. You know, these damn women are just going to steal from me. And it's just so interesting that not all men feel this way because um, I talked to one of my sons and he's like, Mom, who gets married thinking about divorce? I'm not worried about that. Like, because he loves women and families and he wants children. So I think that... The way that men feel about women has a lot to do with how angry they are about the possibility of child support or alimony. Because I think there's a lot of internal stuff going on. I'm not disputing that it can be had, but what I'm saying is not all men feel so angry about something that has never happened that could happen. And I have met when I went on dates with guys years ago. Uh, guys my age who were divorced, I heard at least three of them say, I want to pay my wife, ex-wife, alimony and child support. She didn't work. She's a really good mom. I want to take care of her. I appreciate her. We didn't get along, but I want to provide for her. You know, that exists actually. And I think I think the way that a man feels about paying alimony and child support has to do with um, how much money he makes, how much he likes his work, and how he feels about being a provider, how he feels about his ex-wife. Like if he's really angry with her, he might not like it. I met this couple a few years ago um, uh, at dinner and he was divorced. Um, he gave his ex-wife the house in La Jolla. They had a couple kids. And, um, and, uh, and actually, he was left with very little money, to be honest. He only had enough money to rent a house. It was a nice house. I went, to, I went over, and he was remarried. Um, he was remarried, but he said that um, he was so much happier now that he didn't mind that he had to um, pay out that much. But I could see, you know, the impact on his life. And it seemed unfair to me that she got the house and he was paying all this money and he was working so much just to provide for them. In that case, I thought he got the worst deal. And I've seen that also. So... But again, I think it all depends on, um, there are financial calculators online that you guys can look up. But again, the reason I didn't ask for alimony or child support was because I didn't want to be some helpless woman who was taking money from a man I was no longer fucking. Like, it's just low class, honestly, in my opinion, um... It's kind of like trying to get a disabled placard on your car because you don't want to walk into the store. It's that mindset. And I still remember when I was younger, this really made a huge impression on me. My mother um, was a tra is a transcendental meditation teacher, and there was one of her good friends who was also a meditator. This was back in the 70s, and this woman was disabled. And she was like, I'm not going to let anyone give me labels. I refuse to be labeled and put into a box. And she qualified for a disabled placard on her vehicle, and she refused it. She said, I will not be treated like I'm disabled. I'm empowered. I can walk. I will walk. And she didn't want the handout of the disabled. And so there are women who don't want the handout. They don't want the handout from a guy that they're no longer with. That That's how I felt. Uh, I don't want to plunder this guy. 
uh, I didn't even want to take half of the 401k money, but people talked me into it. They're like, Sharzat, you should take half of it. You're entitled to half. And I, I, I let myself be talked into it, to be honest. I, I felt like that was his money that he earned, you know? So I'm saying you got to look at the kind of women you're marrying. Now you get certain women that are all about the money, all about the Instagram and what people think and what the neighbors think. They got to have the hair extensions and they got to have the house has to look right. And you know what the neighbors think and what everyone thinks. And they got to flaunt and be very superficial and, um, they're all about their image and their status and what people think. And think about a lot of these celebrities like Kim Kardashian who exploits people and lies and scams. Women like that are going to take you for everything you got. They're vindictive. They don't care about you. Okay. They don't have feelings. And a lot of the people who watch my channel, I think, are people with feelings. And people with feelings often are prey to people who are narcissists or controlling or walled off because it's a perfect match okay so I am working with a therapist right now um, and she's helping me <laughs> like people that go to therapy are not people that are users or selfish we use but we attract those kinds of people so that's what we have to be aware of those of us who are empathetic and kind and want to see our part often are attracted to people who are the opposite and so we get, we can get ourselves into situations with people who want to take advantage or use us. So that's why you have to pick your wife carefully. You know, what kind of person is she? Does she care how people feel? Or is she vindictive? You know, how does she treat her exes? Does she talk badly about them? Is she like vindictive? Like if she's upset with you, is she going to blame you? Everything's your fault. I'm going to get back at you. That's what you want to look for. Okay. Because even if a woman is a stay-at-home mom, say that you're married for 10 years and you have a couple kids in elementary school and she's been staying at home and she doesn't have a degree or anything, you could fund her to go to a community college to be you know, a dental hygienist or a hairstylist or she could be uh, even like an electrician or plumber, I don't want to be sexist, or... You go to school for something else so there could be a limited time where you can agree or maybe while the kids are little she takes night classes to learn a skill uh, a skill to make money you know I think we all have to be able to provide for ourselves so that way you're not just stuck and blindsided uh, if you're a person who is concerned about that. But, you know, some men don't care. They're very generous. And they're like, well, if something happens, you know, I've got the money. I'm going to take care of my wife and my kids. There are men who actually feel that way. So tune into what feels right for you. Um, you know, I just wanted to make this video about child care and alimony and dispel the myth that all women are gold diggers. There are some women who are gold diggers. There are some men who are gold diggers, okay? There's a percentage of the population that is that uses people, sees people as objects, and doesn't see relationships as like a loving, affectionate partnership, but as someone to exploit or use, okay? Like you, like um, uh, maybe you just getting with this woman because she's very beautiful or she's very famous or you know, for her arm candy, so you're using her, and she's using you because of your money and to show off her status, you know, so you got to think about what kind of person you're with and what kind of a relationship you have, and then think about, you know, like my ex-husband and I, we talked about this, like what happens if you die? How much life insurance do we need? What happens if I die? How much life insurance on me? You know, what about the will? What's going to happen with the kids if one of us dies, if we both die? So you got to kind of plan that stuff. And that's really good stuff to plan before you get married. And if you're afraid to have that conversation, there's your answer. Because those are all real life things that have to be considered. How are we going to handle this if we get divorced? If that happens, you know, um, 
or do you plan on working? What if you lose your job skills? You know, like the husband could die. I know some people where the husband just died. She's got three kids and he left the house more, fully mortgaged. She's like, might have to move back to her home country. So, you know, I mean, this is real life. You got to plan the stuff out. But do not think that all women are gold diggers, okay? Um, I have a family member who had to pay her ex-husband uh, child support because she makes more money. I have another friend who just got divorced and she bought her husband out of the house. There, so she no one's paying any money to anyone. Um, who else do I know? Um... I don't really have that many divorced friends. Of course, my own case. Um, I don't know any women who are getting alimony or child support. I know zero. <laughs> okay. So here's my invitation for those of you who are like, all women get money and alimony and child support. You might be watching too many videos. Just start looking around in rural life and look at the divorced people you know and start getting curious. Like, is this woman getting alimony and child support? Is this man paying alimony and child support and how much? Because like I said, the average child support payment in the U.S. in 2010 was $430. And the average American man makes, what, $50,000 a year? He doesn't have enough money to be siphoned and taken to the cleaners. So, um, and I think that men who make a good income are going to get a prenup. And there's nothing wrong with the prenup because... The marriage is a legal agreement. It's not just a romantic fairy tale. It's a legal agreement. So I think that it's, it's prudent to discuss the legal arrangement you're getting into. Like, it's a contract. You're not getting a contract that says, okay, you're getting married in the state of California, and if you get divorced, this is the calculation for child support and alimony, but it's there. They don't t give you that when you get married, but they should. Because you don't even realize you're entering into a legal agreement. But even if you live with someone for 10 years, you have a legal agreement. Um, so I think it's only fair to discuss. And to be honest, like, I have some fears. I have some fears that you might leave me and I will be financially powerless. I have a concern about that. I think it's fair to discuss all of these things, but I don't like people saying all women plunder men for money because that's a lie. And if I see any comments like that, I'm just going to delete them because it's not true. And I don't like any of that. All women are, you know, all men are like this. All women are like this. That's um, black and white thinking. And it's not even true because we're all individuals and people are all different. But um, if you have like an alimony or child support story to share or you're divorced and want to share something in the comments, you know, please share your own experience. I, I only know a couple of the statistics I looked up. I don't know um, all of the data. Let's see. The child support statistics I looked up is that... Um, Let's see. On average, custodial single parents who receive child support get about $287 per month for food, shelter, clothing, medical costs, and education. So there are about 7 million of these parents. Only 43% received all the child support. 25% received some and 30% received none. Now, 40% of fathers were awarded child support and 52% of mothers. So there it is. 40% of custodial single fathers were awarded child support in 2015. So there are men getting child support. So don't come on here whining about, oh, you know, I'm a man. I'm such a victim of the courts. I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't want to hear it. No victims, okay? Um, so unless you have some data to show me that you're a victim, it's not very sexy, okay? So that's it. I hope this video has been helpful, and thank you for watching.